Hey, it's Boxer Me, Order Boss Lance, it's me, Spike on the other. Come and join me video in this video. I am doing Jensen Impact Monsters as mech armor. So, yeah, and also Counter Striker does sound a little weird. I don't really know why I have that. But without further ado, let's roll on intro, let's get into this video, and let's go. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Well, finally I'm back. Yeah, well, hey, caramba. Those my commas I just made. Really good, too. Took me a few months, but man, was it worth it. Hey, I'm Constrike, and I just got back from the Beast Bus, and I just remembered about some mechs I finished before all that happened. Um. Me going in and Amber Flynn and I was trapped to a chair. Well, it's about the Creature Heroes Agency. It's a branch off from the HCA. Let's just say they're a whole lot friendlier and I'm actually a someone who would you would a how do you say this? Put in as a um contractor for them. Sometimes they are such strong people, they want mech armors made to take them out. But these people were more like, not to take them out, but actually, if they were to go out of control, we want a mech armor that could be on par with them to hopefully wear them out enough. They gave me four people to work with. These four people were all ridiculously strong. Turns out they're all from a universe known as Tavat, or um, a game of this universe known as Genshin Impact. <laughs> How do you say this? I can remember. This mech I'm as well. Quite fun to make, actually. The first one <clears throat> I used was uh, someone that went by the code name of Long Rusty Dragon. But Kijo was the Primogear Shap. This mech armor was an utter beast. The guy stood over 10 feet tall, and they were in a mech armor that was around 10 feet tall as well. I said, uh, you're going to need, I'm going to put a cockpit in this thing. They said, no, we got plenty of people that are over 10 feet tall. I looked through the registry with their permission, and man, they do. This guy's tail was a little more interesting. Uh, it was like a flail-like thing, with multiple spikes come off of it. But, hey, old Colonel Striker, he could have quite a few parts spinning around, and they paid pretty top dollar for these things. So, you can go on and say that I was able to put in every single ability that guy had. His, um, what was that attack called? Uh, that's what it was called, Primordial Shower. He also has another breath attack, but the one I had a hard time working with was that primal, primordial shower, and also that one where he shoots off his back. The way I incorporated that into the mech armor <clears throat> was by only putting in eight, and every single time it only shoots off four, and then it releases, and whenever they blow up, they actually turn into what we call a nano mech. Nanomax and actually reform back on them. So yeah, and it was actually really simple to make this arms giant huge Really giant and big and huge. So let's get to the next one shall we? The second second one though was uh more Interesting they wanted me to turn well make a mech armor To face another mech like thing this hero more or less had a hero costume that resembled the mech armor they wanted me to make. And let's just say, it was a caramba, a very, very difficult task. This mech armor was, had, this guy went by the code name of AMRG. <clears throat> and the creature was Anonymous Model Ruin Greta. That thing was a pain. They have a bunch of other heroes that have 
some more abilities. Like the um, Ruin Hunters. Those guys were another pin. They actually have me make, make those mech armors for them. But let's just say, like I was saying, they had me make those armors for the Ruin Hunters and all that thing. All those people. They got quite a few of them, and but they're nowhere near as tall as this guy. When I say that, I mean it. The only really weak spot they wanted was on the eye, which was not surprising, but also on the back. Weird enough, I couldn't put anything on the back for a weak spot. So I just stuck with the eye. Don't know why they want weak spot. They say it's more or less just there for the power core. Fun enough, I don't put the power core anywhere there. I always put it somewhere super, super protective when it comes to one of my armors. But, they say they want it in the eye. They want it in the eye. But I more or less didn't put it in the eye. I put it behind the eye. Like, above and behind it. So that way the person can use that eye as a screen. And with the power core right above their head. One good place to the head and this thing is going to blow like a firecracker. But, hey, what can I say? The customer will get what the customer wants. But, onto the attacks. They also wanted this thing to have a self-repairing system. Which, trust me, it was no fun. I more or less just, um... What was it? Oh yeah, I more or less just added a nanomech colony underneath it all. Matter of fact, this thing's up and top upper layers may have solidified nanomechs. It has a four slam combo attack, which, trust me, it's quite pain in the butt. It would also fire a laser if one of the joints are weakened. Or blowing up, exposing another one. Don't really know why, it's just how the micro armor ended up. The self repairment, the enhancement state, the chaotic slam. It can only be used in the enhanced state. Orb shower, pretty much it follows a bunch of little thick, little clobs of earth it grabbed up into the sky. And trust me, it ain't gonna be fun. Um, a charge stomp, it uses the booster on it to actually lunge towards its opponent and then stomp twice a chaotic rush which it performs by a three hit combo followed by a laser slam before firing its laser it followed by a jumping slam before firing its laser directly in front of it now finally the bulldoze this is a it shapes both of its arms together like a bulldozer, and then it will lunge, ram into the character, ram into the opponent, and fling them upwards, and then slam them downwards. So it's quite a pain. Also, for the record, they wanted me to give these Mac armors the same name as their um, heroes. So. Yeah, that's the reason why I fought. But this next one coming up was quite interesting. This one was known as Incarnation of Thunder. Creature was the thunder manifestation from the raging thunder of Mahagun Peak. And funny enough, we have, actually have a similar location in our world. That's actually where that, play, that person, sorry... Got their powers. They are. How do you say. Um, very good with swords. Especially two. Dual swords. That, hence the reason why they want me to make them into two. Bloody swords. Instead of regular hands. And trust me when I say. It was really no fun. Making it. And whenever I was working on it they always came in to check the progress originally it was going to be a really big and bulky mech because of how much they wanted done but it turns out they just wanted it slimmed down quite a bit they also wanted to give it wings i got wings done 
It's actually made for a very slim person. They gave me the schematics of that person after I was halfway done. So I was had to scram it down halfway and still keep all the functionality of it. They have one faceplate, which is pretty much like one eye, which I could work with, and I managed to get done in an orderly fashion. The, funny enough, the the entire head was the last thing done, because it was the part that was controlling it all. You know, but usually, what I'm talking about is I usually have the core, like in a, like in the chest. They had the core, they had a modeled core, which they wanted me to use for this one machine, known as a thunder core. This core can actually absorb the sounds of its surrounding and put in pure energy. I have no idea how that tech works, but trust me, I may or may not have copied it. And I now keep that into my added database of all the cores I have. And trust me, I've got quite a few. But anyways, let's continue. The... The swords came out pretty well, and the more, the most notable attack the person has, which I was able to incorporate it into the mech, was Flurry, was Fury. They, let's just say, that was not really fun for me or for them. The reason why is because it's more of a buff in the mech armor. Increases all the ability and all that. But, it also has a few abilities like Slice and Storm, Smack, Walls of Lightning, Sun, I mean, th Plumes, stuff like that. All attacks that the person wanted me to incorporate, well, one of the C, what was it, CH, Creature Heroes Corporation, to have me incorporate into the mech, because in the case they go... Haywire or something happens to them, like brainwashing or something. They want that mech to be able to copy their moves and keep up with them. Which I can already tell you it's already easy enough because how much sound is generated around us. So let's get to the next one, shall we? Okay, now for the last one. This one was, how do you say, a little more interesting. Reason being is because the person they want to model after had the head shape of a flower like thing. The creature was the fell flower. And their code name was Frosty Pollen. The biggest pain in the butt part of this mech was the fact that they had some resembling swords on them, which they had me copy, but also like pincher like claws on it. And I also had to incorporate those as the god for those swords. It was easy enough, but they also wanted the they wanted it to have like two parts going off the head and then connecting onto the max max arms. Sorry, but trust me, I managed to get that through. This was actually quite the simplest mech out of all of them. Nothing too difficult or anything. As I says, I remember as. I remember, sorry, the bloody attacks. This thing has some interesting attacks. If, well, me to find that file. And the attacks is what well, was actually the hot spot of the mech. Because this thing has two little things orbiting it and floating around it at all times. These are, you know, they've dubbed them arcane fruits. And they have three types of attacks on them. They... They can summon, well, they can turn into two things that resemble slimes to attack them. They also have the ability to control Cryro, or the ice abilities. <clears throat> they can, they slam into the ground for an AoE attack, and they can freeze the opponent. And also, launch, for the ty second type of attack, it can launch, um, how do you say it, and launch little... Parts of itself off to pretty much be like home in homing um Cairo missiles, and that's just one. There's a lot more. There's also the snowball strike, releases small projectiles. The spin it real the pretty much they spin around and the activate the the um Cairo abilities I incorporated frost cannon. 
they pretty much just shoot it out from like both hands. There's like a little <clears throat> little cannon at, at the end of each hand where they can shoot it out from. But this thing can actually some can actually dig underground relatively fast. And it can actually shoot out a pretty nasty attack. Known as subterranean burst. It can literally leap up from the ground and tackle anyone out of it. And trust me, it's a pretty nasty attack. There's the spin and bar bombment ones. And also avalanche releases. The avalanche releases massive waves of ice attacks. The bombardment releases massive snowballs. And the spin, they really just stretch out their, since the thing is also coated in some nail mechs, it stretches them out and spins around while close to the ground. And the Arcane Essence is more or less just a shield. It can, whatever damage they inflict in one attack, and the person inflicts into one attack of this thing, the mech armor will automatically repel the attack. And hit them right back in the face with it. That's all of them for the day, people. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video because I'm afraid that's all the time I got for today. Until next time, subscribe to Adrian, Spark, Streaming, or Demo Slides. Goodbye and peace out, everyone.